Molding with graphs is a powerful tool that should be utilized. If your machine is equipped with injection graphs, you should learn how to use them. Even though the graphs will vary depending upon the equipment manufacturer, they should provide the same information. Before starting this course, you should have already completed previous universal molding modules, MU1 Introduction and MU2 Fundamentals. We will be discussing the following. Graph Profile of the Injection Velocity or Flow Control Zone. Graph Profile of the Pack Pressure Control Zone. Control Zones. Graph Profile of Pressure During the Plastification Stage. PVT Diagram. Graph Profile of the Injection Velocity or Flow Control Zone. We will be discussing the following. Graph Profile of the Injection Velocity or Flow Control Zone. Injection graphs describe the behavior of the melt during the time that the mold is filling. Let's discuss the graph's components. The horizontal coordinate describes the displacement or position of the injection screw. The maximum position represents the position of plastification plus decompression. The transfer transposition is the point at which injection ends and pack begins. The minimum position zero is the point at which the screw is in its most forward position with zero cushion. The right vertical coordinate represents the speed or velocity of injection. The left vertical coordinate represents injection pressure. Once injection starts, the screw accelerates from its maximum position until it reaches the adjusted injection velocity. It then maintains that velocity until the transfer position, which is the end of the injection stage. So after the transfer position, we won't notice any velocity there will be a slight movement. Remember that, after the transfer position, we must fill the remaining amount, less than 5%. That means that we will observe a minimal velocity. During this injection stage, pressure is a result of velocity. There will be a continual increase in pressure from the beginning of injection until the transfer position. Why is the pressure increase continuous? During injection, the melt will attach to static surfaces, which could be the mold's walls or on top of plastic already attached to the mold surface, and will resist flowing. Since pressure is the result of this flow resistance, the pressure will increase as the amount of material in the mold increases. Could the pressure somehow decrease at some point during injection? Yes, it could happen if the injection velocity or flow decreases. It was previously established that universal molders use one single velocity, with very few exceptions. Under normal conditions, pressure will always increase until reaching the transfer position. To summarize, pressure is the result of the resistance to flow. The more melt that enters the mold, the bigger that resistance. Assuming that there is only one injection velocity, Pressure will increase until the transfer position is reached. During the injection stage, a little over 95% of the mold, runners and cavities, are filled. A pressure limit is programmed for the injection stage. That limit should never be reached, since its sole purpose is to protect the machine and the mold. How large should the pressure limit be? From 5 to 10% of the maximum injection pressure. It is important to note that some controllers are equipped with more than one injection pressure limit, one for each injection velocity. What do I do with these additional pressure limits? Remember that universal molders mold with only one injection velocity. Now, if your controller requires more than one pressure limit, program them to 5 to 10% above the maximum injection pressure. Is the maximum injection pressure always found at the transfer position? Yes, with common molds, when a single injection velocity is being used. What could cause the injection pressure to reach the pressure limit? A good example would be when the gate of a cavity is blocked with material. The screw will try to reach the transfer position during injection. If the limit is not properly adjusted, 
the pressure will continue to increase and the excess melt, corresponding to the blocked cavity, could surpass the clamping force and cause the mold to open. Graph profile of the pack pressure control zone. After the transfer position, the pack zone begins. In this stage, we control pressure and velocity is the result. The cavities are packed and held until the gates solidify. The graph clearly illustrates that the pressure is being controlled and that the velocity, though minimum, will show some movement. Will my graph look similar to the examples being shown? Not necessarily. The graphs illustrated were created for educational purposes. Can the pack pressure be greater than the transfer pressure? Though it's not normal, we have found processes in which the pack pressure was greater and have discovered that they were filling much less than the 95% of melt required during the injection stage. Once the transfer and plastification positions are properly adjusted, pack pressure ends up being less than transfer pressure. How much less can the pack pressure be compared to the transfer pressure? It's too early to answer this question, but it can be said that it will depend upon the mass dimensions. For example, some prefer maximizing the mass dimensions and correcting with thermal dimensions. How do we maximize mass dimensions and correct with thermal dimensions? Anytime an application allows it, this technique of packing to the maximum pressure required allows the demolding of hot parts, permitting the parts to shrink to their desired size. Do the graph change when the molds include hot runners? They should be the same. The difference between cold and hot runners is the objective of reducing material consumption, since the hot runner never solidifies. The melted material in the hot runners will be part of the next cavity fill. Even with hot runners, you still must inject, pack, and hold until the gates freeze. There exist some molds with hot runners that include gate valves in each cavity. When activated, these valves operate like the gate freeze effect. How does the gate freeze stage work with hot runner molds that include gate valves? Once the cavities are packed, the valves in each gate are activated, sealing them so that no melt can pass. The signal that closes the valves originates from the signal that corresponds to the pack or hold time. What is the advantage of using gate valves? They result in a better finishing of the molded parts in the gate area and a reduction in pack time, since there is no need to wait for the gates to freeze. In summary, during the pack stage, the velocity is the result of pressure control and its magnitude will be insignificant. During this stage, the remaining part of the cavity that wasn't filled during the injection stage will be filled, without considering the runners. The pack pressure is maintained until the gates freeze. The farthest position, which should never be equal to zero, is called the cushion. When packing, why do we only take into consideration filling the cavities? Because during the pack stage, the effect that we are looking for is the mass dimensions of the parts in the cavities. Remember that we are molding parts and not runners. Is it possible for the screw to reach the zero position during normal operation? It could happen, but that could mean that the process is out of control. What could cause such a zero cushion effect? One reason could be a defective check ring, possibly scratched or worn, that is not properly sealing against the screw. One of the advantages of molding by graphs is that, by a simple look, we can determine if the process is working properly or is out of control. Anyone who understands how to read these graphs should be able to interpret the process's behavior at each stage, even if that person is not a molder. Identify each control zone. Injection, the zone that controls injection velocity or flow. Pack, the zone that controls pack pressure and time. Cooling, the zone that controls the temperature of the mold and cooling time. Graph profile of pressure during the plastification stage. Plastification and decompression occur during the cooling stage. Plastification happens when the screw turns and loads with melt for the next cycle. The graph illustrates the pressure during plastification, which should equal the set back pressure. Once the screw fills with the required volume, 
The plastified material is decompressed in order to avoid drooling during demolding. Summary of Ideal Injection Stage Graph The first stage, injection, is also known as the velocity control stage. For those of us in universal molding, the significant parameter is injection time. In this first stage, pressure is the result and not a control variable. The pressure limit is an emergency variable and not a control variable. The pressure limit is adjusted 5 to 10% more than the highest pressure in the stage. This pressure limit should never be reached. Summary of Ideal Pack Stage Graph The second stage, pack or hold, starts at the changeover position. This pack stage is also known as the pressure control stage and ends when the gates freeze. Here, there are two control parameters, pack pressure and hold time. In this stage, velocity is insignificant. Summary of ideal graph at the end of fill or cushion. The cushion is the last plastic that stays in front of the screw, used to compress and hold the melt in the cavities. Some cushion should always remain so that the screw never reaches the zero position. Remember that one of the advantages of molding with graphics is that it is easy to determine if a process is under control. Let's review. PVT diagram. For the benefit of the academia, we will place these concepts into a PVT, pressure, specific volume, and temperature diagram. The vertical coordinate represents the specific volume, the inverse of density. Specific volume is equal to volume divided by mass. The horizontal coordinate represents the temperature of the melt. The red graph lines represent constant pressure from 1 bar to 1,600 bars. Note that the value of the pressure increases when lowering to the next line. The movement within each constant pressure line represents a specific volume and a unique melt temperature. Before injection, the material is decompressed, waiting to be injected. Once injection begins, pressure increases compacting the material at a relatively constant temperature. Once the changeover position is reached, the pressure control zone begins, normally at a pressure that is lower than the changeover pressure. The cavities are packed at a constant pressure. Consequently, there will be more material per volume unit, which will cause a reduction in the specific volume. During the pack stage, the melt loses heat, and as expected, the graph will show a reduction in temperature. Once the gates freeze, the pack stage finishes and the plastification stage begins. The parts are held inside the cavities as they cool. The heat is removed quickly with a minimum reduction in the specific volume. The compressed melt solidifies and the pressure decreases. Once the cooling temperature ends, the parts are demolded into the atmosphere, where they continue cooling and shrinking at a constant pressure. Let's review. Molding with graphs is a powerful tool that you should use. It's a quick and effective way to verify processes, even if you're not a molder.